everyone comes a little close. We will make this this one's deep here. Okay. Okay. Learn to access your Akashic records. Alright, so here's the thing. Um <laughs> some of the writing's gonna be a little tiny. Um, and I, I can post this because this is like original material. So I'll post this on the, uh, when I send out the videos. Okay. So last week we learned the tradition or two weeks ago, we learned the traditional method of accessing the Akashic records where we did a guided meditation where we walk through a garden and we see a body of water and we sit and people we love meet us and give us gifts and words of wisdom and we brought spirit and love and um, our angels and then ascended masters or archangels and we keep going up the steps till we arrive at the gates, the doors of the Akashic Record where we go in and it's a very traditional looking library. Part of the point of this journey to get to the Akashic Records is to put yourself into a hypnotic state of receptiveness. And part of it is you're going on a journey, which puts you in a mental state to be ready to be on a journey. Is you basically, you're going through an entire story to get to a story. Um, if you go in and out of the records regularly enough, you can just directly tap in like Bill and I do. You don't need to go through this whole journey the whole time. Um, doing daily meditation is an excellent way get yourself prepared for auto access to the journey. Um, today, we're going to talk about different ways of sensing information from the Akashic record and receiving information. Because it's not just when you are on the vision quest in the Akasha. Afterwards, you know, that opens a door. And once you open a door, you're going to keep looking outside and sometimes butterflies or, you know, leaves will come inside. Um, I was telling Bill uh, today about a bit of a rambling story I won't get into now, but um, I've always had a desire, well, for a cookery <coughs> blade, which is what the Gerber soldiers had. And I thought it was always because of this movie I saw when I was a kid and because I'm a chef, you know, I love knives. I, 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 it, it sounds perverse, but I, I just have, I, I love knives, but again, I'm a chef, so that's okay. And then um, finally I ordered a kukri knife because I just like, I want one. And through a chain of bizarre coincidences, I ended up being given basically a $200, very high quality kukri. And it's just like really funny chain of coincidences. Um, and I was saying, that's so cool that I want this based on that movie. I so I'm like, I never saw a movie. These are actually my memories. Like my entire life, I've had these few bits of memories of this particular time in a particular life when I had a really great time. And now that I'm actually allowing myself to get this blade, which for some reason I've like denied myself my whole life. It has opened the door and these memories come in. I'm like, oh, that was me. During the Boer War, I was in India and I was running around slitting fruits with people who were sleeping in their encampments and I had a great time. And I saw the British with their pith helmets and I don't think, I, I was saying, Bill, I think I may not have been as silent as I should have been because I don't recall it being a long life. Uh, <laughs> which may be why like my higher self said no more green knives for you <laughs> uh, now I have not done any past life regression to this particular life but certain acts caused memory triggers and the more you do this kind of work and the more memory triggers you get the more it makes you receptive to getting more and more and more like, what was I saying about uh, uh, messages from spirit? I always say at first it takes spirit a lot of effort to get a tiny message brought to your attention. But the more receptive you are to this, the easier it is for spirit to send you bigger and bigger messages. So that's why I always say whenever you think in your mind, is that a message? 
Yes, it is. That's your subconscious trying to tell you it's a message and your conscious is going, oh, it is. Anytime you think it's that a message, it's a message. Just go with that. And whenever you think, was that real in the Akashic Record? Yes, it was real. Just go with it. Okay. So today we're going to take a guided journey up our spirit mountain. And we will end up at the tree of life at the top of our spirit mountain. We will, when you're at the top of your spirit mountain, you can look out over the vista and see all your past <coughs> lives. Now, they're not in order of, and it's one of those things where like something may be a hundred miles and one foot at the same time. Like you may look and see an entire country next to a village and they'll seem to be taking up the same amount of space. That's one of those fun things about the Akashic Records. It's sort of like when you're on a website and you click on something and a box pops out. Imagine it that way. They're trying to show you a lot of information in a way that we can handle it in a three-dimensional reality. But what they're showing is not three dimensions. It's more like seven or eight dimensions. and We can't really process that. So you will look over the vista mm -hmm. and see all these past lives. We'll go and we'll even fly over so you can get a look. The lives that are closer to your mountain are the lives that are having more connection with your current life. So you might see a primitive, like Neanderthal you next to a flapper of the 1920s you because it's not a timeline thing. It's emotional connection to you in the here and now. And as you go through this life and your, um, you evolve as a person in any direction, the landscape, the vista will shift subtly to accommodate. So we'll enjoy the vista, then sit on our mountaintop next to our tree of life. And each person, like you know about the tree of life, we each have our own tree of life, the tree of life that connects us in a physical, emotional, spiritual way. I have some pretty slides about that. We'll sit at the tree of life and invite any of our past selves, past lives who wish to come and join us for a picnic. Um, and you can chat with your past selves. I do this all the time. I have like multiple past selves. So like we do cocktail parties and we sit around. Like in real life, I can't drink a whole lot because it interrupts my ability to do this work. And I get hung over really, really bad on very little alcohol. Um, but I'll go into the Akashic Records and it will be like a lovely living room and my past lives and I are having martinis. And <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Um, then you'll notice in the tree of life, there's a door. You'll go into the door to the Akashic Records that are in your tree of life. And then we'll invite whatever past lives you wish to join us because we are not primitive beings. We're modern, polite people. Would you like to come along? And from there, we will do our Akashic Record journey. So the guided meditation will take all together about an hour. Once we go into the Akashic Record, there will be 15, 20 minutes for you to really have a long, enjoyable journey. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about time. How for us, time is linear, kind of. You know, Diane and I have gotten pretty good at lengthening time or shortening time or creating pockets in time. Exactly. <laughs> and it's something that I know we all of us, when you think about it, when you're like, oh, I had to get like two hours of work done in a half hour and I did it. Like you probably create a little pocket in time or you stretch time a bit. Time is not as linear as we think it is. Um, and a couple of times a year, we get Kim over here to teach a time bending class, which is like so much fun, so much fun. So, um, so in the Akashic Records, like don't worry about applying this concept in the here and now to our everyday life or you'll go a little cuckoo. Um, in the Akashic Record, I think of time more as facets on a crystal. And I think of us, like myself and all of my past lives, 
yes, it's all me, but each of us lived a very different life. And um, so, and we can communicate with each other. So I think of us as like facets on a beautifully cut crystal. And this facet was this life, this facet was this life, this facet was this life. And I can look into the crystal from my life and see through the crystal to all the previous lives. And we can connect through the crystal. Um, anyone who's taken a geology class or really looked at how crystals are cut, you know, they have what's called lines of cleavage, which is the direction that if you cut or smash a crystal or a rock that it will cleave into. Um, so crystals naturally grow with these little facets on them, but inside you have a network of smaller facets, internal lines of connection. And depending on the crystal type, you can have all kinds of information or energy, just like a quartz crystal is used with inside laptops, in our watches. Um, what is, I think, uh, Mac, Apple has determined ruby crystal is actually a better receptor for energy. <laughs> And um, some of the very high-end Apple stuff uses ruby crystal mixing with the quartz. Okay, so here I have that little crystal that I mentioned with all the fun little facets on it. And some are bigger and some are smaller. But if you dissect it, you see you have lines of, of direction going all throughout. It's not just the outside flat facets. All of this if you cut it through, you see there's micro lines of connection all throughout. This is how I see my connection with my past lives. I am maybe this little Z facet and all of each life has been a different facet and we can connect to each other. And here's another fun thing by showing um, arcs of connection as well as lines of connection. And so we can connect with multiple lives in multiple ways, just by thinking of sending energy through crystals. And here you have like lines of energy running through multiple crystals. Um, and just show that to just say, you know, it, it's not just like, it's never stagnant. And your connection with your past life, like this is how I visualize it. You may visualize it as like petals on a flower or blossoms on a bush or um, blades of grass in a field or nails in a house, like whatever works for you to connect, to connect with this is it, viable. But if you look at most crystals, you know, don't just grow like this. You have crystals that are nice and complicated and you have multiple material within a crystal. So we can be as, you know, the more we explore, the more we realize there's more of us to explore. We're not simple beings. And I love this one here. Like you have crisp, like a crystal mountain with all of its great little peaks in here you know, on another crystal. And it looks like this is how um, I see my life. The first many thousands of years I incarnated, I was extremely rough. Uh, Bill seen my past lives. I just went to war. I was like, I'm going to run around killing and maiming. I'm going to run around <laughs> killing and maiming. I'm with my brotherhood of killers and maimers. Karmically, this life I'm going to balance. I'm going to be a farmer who's going to get killed and maimed. Okay, balance. I'm going back to killing and maiming. I mean, it's just like <laughs> lives and lives and lives and lives. And when I look at this crystal and I see how rough the base is, but then one day I went, hey, wait a minute. Maybe I can heal people. It was like this epiphany. <laughs> And that's when I had like the worst next life because I had to like karmically balance like everything <laughs> rotten I had done for thousands and thousands of years. I had an awful life. And then after that, a lot of really great lives. So 
filled with gentleness and healing. It was a real shock for me the when Bill gave me an Akashic record reading because all I remembered was the last like 1500 years of like healing and being gentle and kind and loving, like all these beautiful, fun, like adventurous lives. And, you know, somewhere I was like a sailor at sea and drown or, you know, stuff like that. Like not all of them great, but predominantly female, kind, loving, nurturing. And then Bill tapped and he's like, oh, I see a lot of pain, a lot of killing. And I'm like, oh, you don't mean me. And then I tapped like, oh, that was me. <laughs> um, but if I hadn't have had all of that down there, of the running kill, kill, I wouldn't have the base that allowed me to grow all of this beautiful stuff. Um, and as you can see, we can be very complicated crystals, you know, with lots of growth. But energetically, this is how I feel this also translates. Lotus with energetic connections and lots of amethyst and peacock and a happy person mm. in the middle just connecting with it all. It's my hope someday to feel like that. At the moment, I feel more like, let's just have like the base of this. But, but I just mentioned this because um, you will be connecting with yourself. You know, you will go into a past life where you are watching the life you lived while you are also living that life, while the spirit of the life you're watching is hanging out with you, talking with you about the life you're both watching, like you will feel like you are in all place or even moving around. Sometimes I'm watching, sometimes I'm being. So now I'm watching again, now I'm being again. And so, you know, like I'm one with myself, I'm separated from myself. All of that happens. But eventually we all become one within ourselves. This is probably like our higher self watching us and laughing at us trying to figure out what our higher self already knows. Okay, so today we're going to climb up our spirit mountain. Each person has a unique spirit mountain. You may already have dreamed of this mountain, or you may have a mountain that you love to hike. You may have a country you love to go visit so you can be on this mountain, or it may be a mountain in your mind that you've never physically been to. This can be a tropical, Arctic, you know, Northwest Territory, jungle. It can be any kind of mountain that works for you. While you're on your mountain, um, I mean, this is something you could spend many meditations exploring your spirit mountain. I actually have a cabin on my spirit mountain and I go there and I hang out. And a cave, like my, my spirit mountain's all decorated now. I have a garden, everything. Um, but today we are going to not hang out with a lot of the fun stuff. We're going to go um, right up to um, the top of the mountain. We're going to climb up the top of the mountain. As you're climbing up, I'll tell you, you'll see things around you. It will be up to you to see what you see on your mountain, you may see waterfalls, plants, copses of trees. But when we get to the top of the mountain, we'll start looking for the vista beyond. And you'll see all kinds of terrains, terrains that will match, terrains that won't match, terrains that seem to be moving and you're like, wait a minute, that was over there, and now it's come closer, and that was bigger, and now it's smaller while I focus on that. Um, so we will look down at the vista of all our previous lives. And then at the top of the Spirit Mountain, you'll also find a tree. And there may be animals there as well. Be receptive to whatever comes forward because it's all meaningful for you. There may be beautiful flowers or it may be bare rock, you know, whatever it is, is what is meaningful for you at this moment. It can shift and change, you know, over time. And you'll have a tree. The tree will have some kind of doorway or entryway to it. I mean, you all remember my talking 
last class about how there was a tree in our backyard with a door and I'd go into it. We each have one of these, it's just most people don't think to um, go to them. And then we'll invite past lives or animals. You never know who will show up, bears or dogs or mountain lions or fairies or whatever. Invite anyone who wants to join you. Whoever joins you is going to be meaningful for you in the here and now. So at this point, I want you to think about how this parallels to our previous meditation. We're going to be in nature. The last one, we're in a garden and we wended our way. This one, we are at the base of a mountain. We will climb our way up. Last summer, we climbed up the stairs to the library. This summer, we're climbing up the side of the mountain. Last time people who loved us met with us. This time we're meeting with past lives who love us. You're not going to have any past life who like wants to harm you. Like even if you have a past life who, you know, ran around maiming and killing all the time, that past life will love you. All of your past lives are going to love you. That is so important to remember. This is like the safest group of people and the most diverse that you could ever be with. Um, we'll have a pleasant picnic and you'll see your past lives will be from a mixture of time and space. They may not even be from this dimension, you know, because we're, we don't live all our lives necessarily in one dimension. Or you may have chosen to spend, take a hiatus from living in the human form and decided to sort of just be in spirit for a very long time. So that element of you may also choose to be here. We'll find out. <coughs> uh, and here we have a fairy on a slug. I love that one. You never know what will show up. <laughs> um, so as I said, the tree of life, there is the tree of life. We each have our own tree of life. Your tree of life is special to all of your lives. This is a symbol of your connection to your physical, emotional, and spiritual body. Your tree of life is also your Akashic record or your Akashic library. So I love these images where you have Gaia nurturing from below and God and the angels nurturing from above to your tree. This is a place where all energies that come to you can collect and be in one place. So very powerful. And you know what they say, as above, so below. You know, that's the whole Metatron, two triangles and the Star of David, which is Whatever is happening with you in this life physically is happening also in your energetic life, in your spiritual life, and your emotional life, and that connects to your higher self. And this is recorded in your records, and this impacts your past lives. So you are a very well-supported, beautiful, absolutely connected person. You ahead, too. There we go. So the door to the library or to the tree. It can be anything. It can be any kind of door. It can be any kind of tree. And this tree can change. You know, it can be an apple tree and you may have to climb up and pick an apple and go in through the branches. Like you will know. Your way will be clear to you when you get there. But here's the thing. Now that you have found this tree and made this connection, you will be able to bring this tree to you at any time. You can go there in your dreams. You can be bored waiting for, you know, a meeting or an appointment. You can just bring the tree there in front of you. Trees are very easy to transport. Just ask any arbor. Um, and this can help connect you into your Akashic records. Um, a lot of people find it easier 
to do the tree than the big library when you're sort of on the run. So I just have some fun, you know, uh, some people, when you go into the tree, you see the Akashic records as they are. And some people you get fun, funky, like hobbity kind of library. So be aware that the library you see may or may not be like the library that you saw the last time. And when we go the next time into the Greek uh, Colosseum, you'll have a different kind of library. Okay. Um, so again, you'll go in the library, make yourself comfortable, get yourself a book, and um, if your past lives are with you, be prepared that what might happen instead is one of your past lives may follow you in and start telling you the story of his or her life. And that will be your book. So if there is someone there like magically transporting you, they'll be like, oh, hold on, where's my book? That, that, that will be your book. Um, so then it will be time for you to connect with yourself. I love this picture because this is a lot of times how I see the Akashic Records and the library. It's not the library as we just described it. It's just like all this information all around me. And all I have to do is like reach out and touch it. And I'm filled with all the information I need. It's, it's almost like the movie Tron, you know, um, where they go into the computers. And yeah, sometimes I feel like whoever wrote that must access the Akashic Records a lot. Um, and these are just some images I love because they're about connecting with yourself, um, connecting with your higher self and your whole being. As always, the more you just give yourself to it and relax and go along <coughs> for the ride, the easier it will be for you to have the ride of your life. Right. So yes, yeah, so if anyone needs to use the restroom, uh, do some stretching, get some water, now's a good time. If anyone, we have plenty of floor cushions. If anyone would rather lie on the floor or sit on the floor, it, the meditation will take about an hour. Because we need to get all the way up to Spirit Mountain, connect with everyone. Yes, shut off your phone.